I get a high off of just freaking people out. You have to figure out other ways to make strong art. How do you create something that's also new? Working through those pitfalls is how you find the, the bottom of the pit. Is that Sharpie work right there? <laughs> uh, what was it? What were we talking about? Um, you have a husband, and I have a wife. But if you start to talk that going to mess up our life, please, baby. You just keep it all to you. I got a review, and the critic who reviewed me asked me why I um. Do that for me, darling. Why I was appropriating work from these white artists and wasn't referencing certain black artists. I thought it was kind of interesting that me being black, that I have to reference someone black. I love when white people tell me I need to go experience more black things. It's so funny how like race is always like, uh, everything is kind of about race. It's a little daunting. I'm the black guy. I'm not like the black guy from most colors. <laughs> Yo. Me and Irvin were driving to South by Southwest and um, we drove through a, um, a cotton field. And I was like, pull the fuck over. And so he pulls over, I jump out, I pick some cotton. I can't imagine this being like my job and shit, you know? And so. And the history of the Cotton Club is, Cotton Club was originally owned by this black boxer uh, in Harlem. And then like one of those gangsters basically took over the club. And when they took it over, they made it like a fucking like whites only club where, um, you know, a lot of the fucking staff was black and it was all black performers and shit. And niggas weren't allowed inside unless you were like someone of like some like very big caliber or something like that. I wanted to do my own iteration of the Cotton Club. Great to see so many friends here tonight enjoying themselves in spite of the cover charge. And if you can spare a minute from your merrymaking, I'd like to have the pleasure of introducing the greatest living master of jungle music. Two niggas going fishing. It's always, they have to do their faces and then there's fish jumping in and out of the water and shit. I think I was kind of drunk. And then I think I said something about it on Instagram. And then after that, it was just kind of like, oh, so you're doing a performance? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. So you know these paintings called Degas Dancers? These three ballerinas in like a, like a dark room and it has like a salon style hanging of a bunch of paintings all around them. I kind of like always have a pitfall like somewhere in the making of a show. Working through those pitfalls is how you find the, the bottom of the pit. It's interesting how there's like a kind of like direct correlation between planning a painting and planning a ballet. It's like it's two in the same in a weird way. The paintings aren't really like paintings. Like this isn't a painting to me, but it kind of is assuming the assuming the position of a painting. I always think of these pieces as like, each shelf kind of contains a bunch of shit that I would actually use in a painting, but it's kind of like a shelf of like possibilities. They're constantly just kind of like taking weird images from the internet and using that almost like a brush stroke. When you step away, it just looks like a bunch of tile pieces of color. When you get in, you can see there's little like repeating images. 
It's definitely themed, you know, a lot of it's, a lot of it's like movie, old TV stuff too. A lot of drug paraphernalia. I guess a lot of just shit that has to do with my life. <laughs> Drugs and TV. This guy over here. Put you upside down, probably. It's good to do shit that like you're afraid to do. I usually don't use the computer for much. And this stuff was like all mocked up in the computer and I printed it out as a background. At first I wanted to just be a painter, but then like you paint forever and then you realize that paintings can only do so much. I mean, it all stems down to just really being more interested in the viewer and the viewer's experience of like my shows. I feel like I'm just kind of repeating myself at this point with painting. Well, it's like creating me to make different work, but it's uh, also making me not want to make work because I feel like I'm not using the proper medium at the time. I don't think the paintings are, are weak or anything. It's just I feel they are they're the consequences of not doing something else. This dude came up and he was like, how would you feel if I had a poster that said, kill all the black men? And I was like, well, I'd probably spit on you. He's like, well, I'm Jewish. And I was like, does that, does that matter? So we're gonna have that conversation, you know? And he's like, I'm just asking, you know, how you would feel. And I was like, I'm telling you how I feel. I'd, I'd, I'd want to spit on you. You have no right to say that to me. And he's like, you feel you have the right to say, kill all the white men. And I was like, yeah, I do. I feel I have every fucking right to say that. How many posters were there like about like stringing up black people and lynching black people and like all this bullshit? And he's like, well, don't you think we're past that? I'm like, uh, no, cause like they're still killing black kids in the street like every single fucking day, bro. The only thing that we're past is the fact that I can tell you this and not fucking go to jail. Cause I mean, I don't know. So, um, I don't know, dude. Yeah, I don't know.